first of all, um, my screen, can you? Very good. Perfect. Um, right, so my internet is also quite unstable, so I apologize. Do let me know if the sound is bad at any point during the presentation. So as um, James mentioned, I'm going to be talking about using R to scrape the internet and retrieve um, amazing data that you can use for your analysis and research. Um, I made available the slides as well as the scraping scripts um, on GitHub. So it's now um, in public mode. So please um, go ahead. One thing that I would like to ask you to do is not to run the code during the workshop. Otherwise, you may overload the servers. Um, and I don't want that to happen. Thanks. Um, so this workshop is meant um, for beginners R users, and the idea is to introduce you to the world of scraping, and we are covering the different topics um, that are laid out here. So we'll go through about scraping, some ethical considerations. Um, we'll talk about HTML. I know this is our workshop, but um, you need to have a basic understanding of HTML structure. Um, we do go through some inspection of websites, and then we'll finally um, go to the, the main topic, which is the scraping data in R. Um, and for that, we'll use a case study. So a little bit of background is why do I care about scraping? And this relates to my work, where we are um, currently um, analyzing real-world treatment patterns across multiple, uh, multiple cancer types. And to do that and to streamline analysis, um, we want to combine um, different data that are available online um, on different websites. Um, so using scraping, we can combine these sources of data to build a large database. Um, and here the interest is for um, drugs and services. Um, that are subsidized by the Australian government. And we also want to have access to those costs. Um, so that is the idea um, behind this presentation and why we are interested in scraping. So it goes to scraping first. So what is scraping? Um, so this is one of um, the most robust and reliable ways of actually extracting um, web data from the internet directly. So you've got a lot of web pages, and I'm sure you all have your favorite sites where um, you, you look for data for your own research. Um, and we use the web scraping as a tool to produce structured data. So scraping really performs automated information extraction by parsing the page source code, which is why we need to understand some HTML. Some considerations before we start. So do you really need scraping? So just remember to use the tool that's the best for you. So for instance, if you can easily copy paste data from a website into Excel, probably you don't need scraping. It requires, uh, requires too much time and that would definitely be quicker. Um, some websites do provide exports or download features, which are really helpful and therefore no need for scraping. And some websites also um, allow you to access the API, which is the application programming interface, um, such as what you can find on the clinicaltrials.gov website. So there is an API that you can use with R as well to download the structured data from their websites. So if you don't have that, and a typical example would be the EU clinical trials register, um, you just can browse, browse or search data, but you can't actually download or use an API, then scraping is actually helpful. Some ethical consideration as well as legal. So think um, before you scrape, um, you need to consider the following points. First of all, um, is the data actually free? So the terms of use of any website is a good thing to um, check to know whether you are legally allowed to um, extract this data and use it. In terms of um, academic research, I've never seen a website that um, doesn't allow users to um, use it um, solely for research. But um, as soon as you step into the commercial um, use of this data that you've scraped, then you may um, be in trouble. So always good to check that. Um, there may be restrictions um, as to what you can do with the data. And for instance, if you end up linking different data sources together into a big data set, um, you may have some um, issues with copyrights. And again, um, you should look at those before you start scraping. And the final um, risk is, and this is the warning I, I gave um, before I started this presentation, is the risk of overloading the um, website servers. And we don't want to do that. And certain websites actually have um, robot um, text files that tell you, as well as tell um, packages in R or Python, what you're allowed to scrape versus not. 
Um, and so there is a scraping etiquette, etiquette um, and in R you can use the polite um, package to make sure that you do not infringe um, any copyrights or uh, robot rules. So with that being said, um, we can go into the web page uh, structures and HTML. So my apologies, if you already know about HTML, this is gonna be um, a bit simple, I guess, but um, I just wanted to give some context and make sure that you understand, because uh, this is required for the screen. So what, there are three main things um, that allow you to, to actually actually view this information. The first one is the structure, and this is given by the hypertext markup language, HTML. The second um, entity you may find on the website is the relates to the styling of this content. And this is done through the CSS, so the cascading uh, style sheets. And then for more modern websites, you may have complex things um, um, happening on the website, for instance, you click on a button, something appears, and this is typically done through JavaScript. Um, and the rule of thumb is that if the underlying structure of the website you want to scrape um, is well organized, then scraping is very straightforward. If it isn't, then um, it can become incredibly complex. So in terms of HTML basics, um, all HTML documents are built um, with elements. And so this is the, I guess, the base unique um, an element and element contains um, tag. So those are tags. You have an opening tag and a closing tag. And you can see that the closing tag actually using, uh, uses this, um, oh, I forgot what's the name in English, but you get what I mean. <laughs> and elements also contains um, attributes. So for instance, here at the opening tag, I'm adding these attributes and I call it cool. And an element also contains the content, which is you know what you see on the web. Um, and here it's called content. So I made this little um, explanation here graph where um, I'm using the element, the most simple elements you find online, which defines a paragraph. So this is your tag called P. So this is the um, opening of the, the tag and the closing of the tag P. Um, the entire thing corresponds to the elements, and then you've got your attributes, you've got your content. Um, attribute name, for instance, here is a title, and then you get your attribute value, my first element. All right, so that's the really basic structure, and this is, I guess, the only thing you need to understand um, as far as HTML is concerned. So with that in mind, we can look at HTML's anatomy in the most basic uh, sense. So every um, HTML and every website starts with this. Um, this comes from historical uh, reason, but this is to declare that the document you're producing is an HTML document. And then you have a list of different elements. In every website, you'll have the HTML element, which dictates um, that whatever is um, inside this element corresponds to um, an HTML um, element. Then you've got two main um, sub elements, which are the heads and the body, right? Within the heads, usually when scraping is concerned, we don't really care about this. You typically have a title, so that's absolute requirement. And otherwise in head, you find uh, metadata as well as the, um, the styling sheets, right? But in body is actually what you see on the website. And that's typically what you want to extract. So it's the container for the actual information. And it has further uh, various elements that are used to display this content and structure it. So you can group elements using, well, I guess group your information using elements such as div or span. You can use headings paragraphs, these tables, as well as um, attributes that would be included in all of those um, different elements. I hope this is clear. The slides are available, so you can digest it a bit later. Um, but this is the basic structure. And when you look at a website, you'll find all of these elements um, as well as attributes. I do want to flag here that the href um, attribute is specifically used to um, provides internet links. So on a web page, if you see a link, 
typically you'll have um, that attribute to actually provide this link. Right, so this is the basic structure that you'll find on all websites. So we know what a website should be, but um, how do we know what it actually is? So I've here compiled a table um, introducing you to the um, inspecting tool, which is available on uh, most browsers these days. Um, and you have the, the, the uh, shortcuts for Windows or Mac OS. Um, so you can either use uh, these shortcuts or you can simply um, inspect by um, right click anywhere on the page. And because my slides are HTML based, I can actually inspect them. So we'll do a little live demo. So I'll just reduce uh, this and increase this. So what, what happens is that um, you start seeing this uh, slider here. So you can control um, the length, um, the width you want. Um, and you see the basic structure of my documents, HTML, the head and the body. Um, you can think of a HTML structure as a tree. So for each element, whatever is in between um, the start tag and the end tag are children's, uh, children of these elements, right? And you can see it here by this um, like long bar that appears. And it shows that for you know um, this element here, slides, um, these are all children of that previous element. Okay. Um, a good thing to know about the inspecting tool is that you've got this little thing here, and I guess a, an arrow head, maybe I'm not sure what it's called. Um, and this allows you to um, find, you see all the structure of the websites. Um, and you may not want to scroll and see what is highlighted when you go through the, the structure of the inspector tool. But let's say I want to scrape this sentence. So I use this, I click on it, and it directly opens within the structure where this is located, right? So this is the paragraph that let's say I, I want to, to scrape and it gives you all the information that you can find, the tags and so on, and as well as the children. So that's the inspect tool and that's available on any website, um, anywhere you go online, you're able to see such structure. So this is a very important tool and just bear in mind, if you're a Safari user, you may have to enable the inspecting tool. And typically this is used for programmers. If you want to um, test new things on your website and so on, this is um, one of the reasons as to why you want to use the inspect tool as well as scraping. Um, so how do you scrape data in R? This is done with a wonderful package um, that was, I guess, inspired by some of the early scraping tools that were initially available on Python. And so in R, this is called RBEST. Um, and I've laid out here the main functions that you can use um, within RBEST in R, as well as their description. So the first thing I want to say is to focus on the blue row here, which is your basic um, function, really important one. Actually, it reads um, an HTML page. Um, so you use it to parse um, the URL, right? And what you get from that um, is an XML um, type of file with an R. Um, once you've read your HTML file, um, you can use different things to extract or parse contents. So here, um, the rows in white and gray are the ones you should focus on. Um, and we'll go to the, the orange one a bit later. So you can extract text information, so the actual content, so what's between the two tags. You can extract um, elements, tables, um, names, or even attributes. But one of the things that's really important is that, you know, when you look at my slides, the structure is, is very easy. There is not much information, but as you know, on many websites, there is so much in there that it's actually almost impossible that you will find just one table. And that's the one you want to extract. So for instance, on um, websites we have scraped in the past, there are multiple tables um, per page. And so you need to be able to tell R where exactly to find the information that you need and that you want to retrieve. And this is done through HTML nodes here, where um, you can really specify the path 
to find your data. And that is done by using CSS selectors. So I'll introduce what is a CSS selector because that's the second tool that you really need to be able to um, use for scraping. So the S, S, uh, CSS selector, um, I mentioned it's used for styling your web page, but it's really neat and nice because it also has a small language that can be used to select elements on the HTML documents. So if you think about your website, you've got different elements that I mentioned before, for instance, a table. Um, and then you've got some CSS rules that are um, associated with this element. And the selector really allows you to define a pattern to locate the elements that you want and you need. So when you combine the inspecting tool and the CSS selector, you actually provide a path to where the data you want can be extracted within R and other programming languages as well. So what is a CSS selector? Um, we'll go back to some sort of a live demo. So again, you open your, um, your uh, viewing tool, inspecting tool. And let's say that I want to extract um, information related to this image. So I want to inspect elements. I want to find where the Im image is located. So again, I use this tool here. And I think it's a similar symbol for all browsers, but you should be able to find it. And I click on the image and it shows me that the image as I want is here. Now, this is the inspect tool, but what you actually want is your CSS selector. And to do that, you click right on um, the, the region that's highlighted and you click on copy and then you select the path. And it's that simple. So you select the path. I'll show you quickly um, what it does by editing the HTML. So let's do that. And this is, so when I copy paste, I actually get this. So I can also display it on my slides. That's also something neat. So here, this is what I get when I copy paste my CSS selector. So if I were to want to extract this image, the way to tell R this is where you should find it is to simply paste this into your HTML node function. So this is really neat, really nice. Um, and it means that you're actually able to extract anything you want on any web page, provided that you're doing it um, in an ethical way. So the case study here was to scrape the PBS, which is the pharmaceutical benefit scheme. And it's very similar to the BNF. So we can look at the website together, but what I want to highlight, and I think I'm almost running out of time, so we'll do one um, good view. Um, the PBS is organized similarly to the BNF. Um, however, I cannot access the BNF because it's blocked from Australia. I don't know why. Um, but what I want you to understand is that the PBS is structured as um, an index of drugs listed as from A to Z. Z and each um, letter is an independent web page. On each web page corresponding to the, um, this letter from um, the, the, the first letter of the drug, you've got the list of drugs that are available on the PBS. And then when you click on a specific drug, you end up in a specific page that has further sublinks for each drug. So if you want to scrape it, you need to think about a way to actually be able to um, think about what's the best way to extract. And this is what I'm talking about. So you have your medicine listing, um, the different web pages, ABCD. And if you look at the, um, the address link here, you notice that um, it's a, a simple um, web address. So each index is listed as the, the name of the, the, the first letter of the drug. Annie, can I ask you so, just to wrap up very quickly, just we're up yep. against time. And so I'm just going to give this example. Um, so we gather all the links um, by just going through um, the web pages. And okay. then this I mean, is the um, function. I think your screen may be frozen as well. I don't know if there's anything you can do to maybe refresh it. We're, we're stuck on your final slide. We don't see the, the web page that you're at. I don't know if there's anything that, that is blocking that. Oh, uh, well, that, that, that doesn't matter. Do you see if I click here? Step one, collect links, and step two. 
it's unfortunately static at the moment. We're on your last slide about the PBAS um, formula. Okay. Do you see here? Mm, maybe something now. It's still pretty slow though. Uh, that may be my internet. Um, look, for re um, in terms of timekeeping, I think um, I've explained all you need to understand scraping. And you have all the examples on the, the websites. Um, and the idea is just to locate your um, nodes, to find your selector, um, and then just extract by using um, the extractor uh, function that you need. You use text if you want to extract content. You use act, um, at ATTR if you need to use um, the extraction tool for websites, and so on. So it's quite straightforward. Um, but I realize that if I want to be a bit more, um, I guess, if you want to understand how you actually scrape such tables for the, the, the PBS, then it's more complicated and it may be intermediate level. So maybe for another workshop, um, but then I'll stop here. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much, Fanny. I thought a very good presentation, especially to give a balanced overview of some of the issues around sort of the ethical issues around scraping. I would have never have been so conscientious to include uh, such material, but thanks very much for that. It would be lovely to have, I think, further work on scraping, as you suggested there, showing some more of the detail.